Domestic violence is where a person you're closely related to assaults you verbally or physically. Saki is an organization that prevents and stops domestic violence from happening. This is the first step that Saki has started taking towards getting violence against women to be a social problem, not a women's issue. I lost my wife, Renuka, to cancer in 2013 from my own experience of my own family. As long as the mother is healthy and able to contribute to the family, everything runs very smoothly. The Women's Health Initiative was a choice that we made as a family to, in, in, to mark her uh, contribution to Saki and in her memory. It's a great organization and they do great work for the community of New York. Um, it's, it's a fabulous organization. It's really evolved. This is endemic across all cultures, all societies, every exactly the same. And you know, there's a lot of structural issues that we're talking about here. And it's, it has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, there's a power struggle going on, you know, how do we value women's worth and home place, lifestyle, workplace, society, you know, there's a lot of things in. We need to think about all of that holistically. We have a very close family friend who is very much a victim of domestic violence. And if there's anything I've learned from watching that experience and watching sort of how much work that my mom had to do to kind of help this person back on her feet, this takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. There's issues around equality of opportunity as far as people who come from varied backgrounds go, equality of opportunity for people who maybe don't have the same language experience that others do. I wish she like met Saki when I was like in uh, elementary school because she would have realized she wouldn't have had to have had to deal with all this crap she dealt with with my father. Beginning of 2011 was when my parents divorced. The abuse just was was just too much at that point, and it took a lot for my mom to do that um, simply because we had a four-year-old in the house, my, my little brother. It was excruciating not to really know what was going on or what I can do. I felt really helpless. Um, I didn't know how to help my mom in terms of getting her back up on her feet, and that's why I'm so grateful for. Communities like Saki. A couple months in, a very good friend of my mother recommended that she reach out to Saki, kind of figuring out hmm, what are some things in New York City. You know, I had no idea how to sit down with my mom and go through teaching her how to correctly speak English, or how can you go about accomplishing this thing you want to accomplish in your life. And then on top of that, connecting with her to a level where that motivation would be provided and that confidence would be provided. It was a pretty incredible change. When I was younger, my mom was your typical stay-at-home mom. But my dad never let her experience anything outside of the house and always kind of kept her under his knee. So she didn't know what to do with herself. She, had, she doesn't really have any work experience. Um, so I gave the confidence to find out, listen, like, you're a smart lady, you're a capable lady, uh, you can do more than you think you are even though you're a housemaker your whole life. She had a certificate in working in a, uh, being able to legally work in a pharmacy and now she works in a pharmacy and it's kind of, it's great. She loves it. I tried my best to not let it affect me in terms of schoolwork and what I want to do with myself in my life, but it did because I always kind of succumbed to what my father wanted me to do. After 2011, after seeing my mom become a almost completely different person, I kind of realized, you know, I don't have to stick to those, what he wanted out of me. I could go on and do my own thing as well. I volunteer at Saki and I conduct workshops with them. One of them is career counseling because a lot of the women that are part of Saki want to be involved with allied health care, so things like nursing, dental, assistance. And the other thing is I conduct workshops regarding nutrition. It's an old saying of you know, health is wealth. Um, and before anybody wants to do anything with their lives, you know, be professional or personal, um, you have to be healthy first. We're often underrepresented in traditional areas of assistance, you know, that are mostly for Hispanics or African Americans or, or natives. There's very little for, for South Asians in particular. In that sense, I think Saki has a very unique niche in the part of New York. I was raised by my mother and, and my maternal grandmother, and I have a younger sister, so my entire household was women. My mother had to deal with a lot of uh, issues, both personal and family and social and financial, after my father passed away. She is a very strong woman and she's very well educated and she's a professor and so she could muster up the strength and the resources to pull both of us, me and my sister, up with her. A strong woman is a very, very important part of the family. When I 
did the toy drive and I was setting it up, all my friends came and we got to put toys in crates and write on the blackboard like, welcome to the toy space and it was really fun. I like to help Sucky because I want to help people that aren't as fortunate as I am. I think it's also equally important to uh, to educate men, to make them more aware, to teach them good values, yeah. you know, teach our sons good values along, you know, as well. Yeah. I think that, that's how you really get uh, the man involved in, in an organization like Saki. The level of domestic violence in the South Asian community is significantly high. For many of these women, Saki is probably one of the few safe zones that they can go to. You need doctors, you need lawyers, you need places to stay, you need to fund women who can get educated so that they can become economically independent. And Saki is doing a, it's just a wonderful job in providing that much needed service uh, to these women survivors.